Hi everyone, how are you? How's everything? I hope you have been enjoying the online course so far and it's being productive for you. We are trying our best to make it a pleasant experience for you. Today, I'm going to start explaining the Laplace transform for you. I know I had talked a lot about it before and I told you that it's going to be one of the main parts of the course but from today we're gonna start it and we're gonna uh, go over it in the next couple of weeks but let's get into it what is a Laplace transform look at uh, in your slides look at this definition here it says Laplace transform analysis is an algebraic technique for computing responses of circuit to differential equations with or without initial conditions for a very large class of practical input signals, voltage and current source excitations. But if you want to listen to me, forget about this. Let me tell you simply what is Laplace transform. Look, Laplace transform is a simple operation. You take a signal from time domain f of t to a new domain we call it s domain or laplace domain we show it with capital f of s and we show it this way the laplacian of f of t equals the capital f of s means the laplacian of the time domain function f of t will be the s domain function f of s and of course we can go from time to laplace domain or from laplace domain to time domain so from t domain to s domain or from s domain to d domain if you want to go back from s domain to t domain we simply do a laplace inverse laplace inverse of capital f of s will be f of t it means the laplace inverse of a function in s domain will give you your function back in time domain Maybe here you can see it better. The Laplacian of a function in time domain will give you a function in S domain. This f of t here is a time domain signal, any signal. Any, you can think of anything. You can, this f of t can be ut, can be rt, can be sine of t, can be cosine of t, can be e to the power of j omega t. Any signal that you can think of, you can take the Laplacian of that and take it to the S domain. But why do we want to do this? Look, we do a lot of operations in time domain, of course. We add signals in time domain, we deduct signals from each other, we multiply signals by each other, we divide signals by each other, we integrate signals in time domain, we differentiate signals in time domain, we convolute signals in time domain. Some of these things are pretty easy. When you add two signals, easy. When you multiply two signals, no problem. If you want to divide two signals, not a big deal. But if you want to do differentiation, mm, it can be tricky sometimes. Integration, even trickier. Convolution, it could be time consuming, tricky, and it we increase the risk of making mistakes during this operation so there are easy operations and there are the operations that we hate and i believe the things that we hate the most are differential equations in general differential equations and integral equations because they can be time consuming bulky calculation and a huge risk of mistakes also convolution pretty risky Laplace transform is there to help us with those tricky operations this is the main reason that we go to Laplace it's like a bus you ride on a bus you get on the bus then the bus takes you somewhere and then you get off the bus of course this makes your life very easy but you should know how to get on that bus and how to get off that bus this is very important in when you look at this first row you imagine you have an input signal it goes to a circuit and an output signal comes out of that circuit if this circuit is a linear simple for example 
circuit with resistors, it's no big deal. You will use your techniques, nodal analysis or loop analysis or voltage divider and you will find your output. But if it has different component, it has, if for example, imagine it's an RLC circuit. It has a two con inductors, three capacitors, five resistors. Then you have to solve a second order differential equation to get this output signal. It might take half a day. But in this situation, you can simply take your input signal to the Laplace domain, to the LT means Laplace transform of your input signal. So you take your, your input signal to Laplace domain. You also transform your circuit to Laplace domain. I will tell you, you can easily transform an inductor capacitor to Laplace domain and make them, you can deal with them like resistors. And then with this simplified circuit and the simplified input, you will analyze it easily in a minute, but you will get your output also in Laplace domain. So all you need to do is to take it back to time domain. So this is like get off the bus. So here, look, you here you got on, get into the bus. You transform your input signal into the Laplace domain here. It's inside the bus because your circuit is also transformed to Laplace, so it's easy peasy. And then you find you got your destination, but now you have to know how to get off the bus. So what we're trying to learn in this series of courses in the next few weeks is these arrows, how to get on to that bus, how to basically take your circuit also, turn it into the bus, and how to go back from the bus to the time domain. So these are the things that we're going to look. Here I try to show it, uh, like visualize it for you. Look here, imagine you had a differential equation. Okay, So you will use, imagine it's a, diff it's a machine that takes it to the Laplace domain. So you take it to the Laplace domain. In Laplace domain, with, with simple let's say, operations like multiplication and add, uh, adding like uh, summation and deduction, you will solve your problem. And then you will put it back to the machine again, find your answer in time domain. So this is how it simplifies your life. And I'm going to tell you how easy it works. Look, you simply go from time domain to Laplace domain with this equation. F of S equals the integral from zero to infinity of f of t e to the power of minus st dt. Of course, since it's a bounded integral, you can imagine that t will be eliminated in the answer and s will remain. So something that had t, like f of t, your signal in time domain, will end up giving you an answer which has s now, which will take you to the s domain. This is a pretty simple operation, pretty simple. But let me give you a very good news. You actually never need to use this operation. But just right now to prove the concept, I will apply this operation on one signal that you all know, which is UT, to show you how it works. Like imagine we're gonna find the Laplacian of UT. So we'll take the integral of zero to infinity of ut to the power of minus st dt. So ut, what is ut? ut is one when t is greater than zero and is zero when t is smaller than zero. So from zero to infinity, ut is simply one. So it's, you have to find the integral of zero to infinity of e to the power of minus st dt. What is the integral of e to the power of minus st, the exponential, the function, the beauty of that is that the integration and the differentiation is the same thing, right? Except for the coefficient here. So the integration of e to the power of minus st will be simply e to the power of minus st over s. Negative s. Why? Because this negative s was here as the coefficient of the t. From 0 to infinity, right? What would be e to the power of minus s? t when t is infinity you can imagine it's zero right because if the power of minus infinity it's going to be a very small number zero 
what would be e to the power of st when s when t is zero it's going to be one so it's going to be zero minus one over minus s right see this one is going to be zero so it's going to be one over one uh, over minus s so the answer is going to be one over s but as I told you, you will never need to do this from now on. I, why? Because I'm going to give you a table like this. That the Laplace transform of the most important functions are written in this table. For example, the Laplace transform of ut was 1 over s. So, of course, Laplace transform of KUT will be K over S. Laplace transform of RT is 1 over S square. K times RT will be K over S square. And like this, UT, and this is if UT is multiplied by exponential, if UT is multiplied by T, if you have a sine, cosine, and everything. And here, I have given you more pairs of Laplace transform. But I told you this basic operation that how do we do that? Just you know where this thing is coming from. So we're going to practice more about how to take simple functions from time domain to Laplace domain, given that we do have access to this table. Okay? So from now, just take a look at this table. As I said, we just showed that the Laplacian of ut wills 1 over s. And exactly the same way we can show that the Laplacian of rt is 1 over s square. And much more that we can either use the definition or we can use some properties that I'm going to tell you later. So all you need to learn from this session are this, that, these few things. That first of all, why do we need Laplace transform? We just need it to simplify our lives when we're dealing with complicated operations. So it's a tool. We go inside this tool, then we, our operations are easy over there. So we do our operations, then we come outside. We are trying to learn the techniques that how to get inside and how to come outside here how to get to Laplace domain and how to get out of the Laplace domain so that's it for today just make sure that you understand that why do we need it and as I said don't worry about the complicated integration that how to go to the Laplace domain you just need to use this table from now on so in the next session i'm gonna tell you how to use this and how to do actually we we'll use these pairs in laplace domain thank you very much have a great day have fun